The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over a many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor, I muttered, rapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly, I wished the morrow. Vainly, I had sought to borrow from my books Surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain filled me, thrilled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, Merely this, and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, Hesitating then, no longer, Sir! said I, or oh, madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so faintly you came tapping, and so faintly you came rapping, rapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you, here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Only this, nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again, I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely there's something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what their at is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter. Then, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Now this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy <laughs> in the smiling, <laughs> by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lord remains on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, 
nevermore. Much I marveled, this ungainly foul to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such a name as nevermore. But the ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy under fancy thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore, Men nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushions, velvet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tuffed floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee. By these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite in the penthe of thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, bird or still of bird or devil. Whether tempest sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me, truly I implore, is there is there balm in Gilead? Tell me. Tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet, still if bird or devil, whether tempts the sun or whether tempest toss thee here ashore, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, Tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sated maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked, upstarting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore, leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken, leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door, take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, in the pallid bust of Pallas, 
just above my chamber door. In his eyes of all the seeming, the demons that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore.